Welcome to Two Way Radio Shop. My name's Neve, and today I'm going to be comparing these. This is the Motorola DP4400, and this is the R7. Here in front of me, we have three generations of Motorola Two Way radios. Starting with the oldest, we've got the GP Professional series, um, the Moto Turbo DP1400, and then the brand new Moto Turbo R7. The Motorola GP Professional series may look a little bit outdated now, but back in the day, this was a really decent bit of kit in the two way radio market. Literally everything you needed a two way radio for at the time, this could deliver on. That was until it was replaced by the Moto Turbo DP4400 series. This is when the two-way radio market finally started to get a little bit more interesting. Um, the DP4400 was introduced as part of the Motorola DMR digital based radio system called Moto Turbo. Moto Turbo is basically a range of products, mainly digital radios and communication solutions such as Capacity Plus, IP Site Connect and Capacity Max. The DP4400 was one of the first digital radios released by Motorola. It's robust, reliable and it has great audio quality. Um, the DP4400 was one of the best of the best at the time, which is why it was widely adopted in many industries across the UK. But as with everything, the two-way radio industry has continued to grow, develop and evolve. Cue the Moto Turbo R7. Um, this is the latest evolution of the digital two-way radio. Last week, Motorola announced the cancellation of the Moto Turbo DP4400 series and they intend to replace it with the R7. Motorola has had massive production line problems over the last year or so and this has led to extremely long lead times when trying to get your hands on any of their products um, the DP44 series in particular. Motorola has said that they hope to see improvements within the supply chain moving forward with the R7. Uh, if you're someone who's currently using the DP4400 series or just interested in the R7 this video is going to be comparing the two models and hopefully give you some insight into the similarities and differences between them. So these are the two devices that we're going to be comparing today. This one here is the DP4801 from the DP4000 series and this is the R7 capable full keypad from the R7 series. Um, I think instantly you can see the difference between the two. The DP model is a lot squarer and the R7 is a lot rounder and also a little bit slimmer. One main thing that sticks out to me is the difference in the accessory connectors. Um, as you can see here on the DP, the accessory connector is quite bulky and it sticks out from the side of the radio. Whereas on the R7, it's a lot slimmer, it's a lot more integrated into the side of the radio. Um, Motorola has actually redesigned the accessory connector for the R7 to make it corrosion proof. This design should help increase the longevity of your radio as often radios need to be repaired or rehoused um, due to damage to the accessory port cover. Um, when the DP series radio's dust cover is removed it does compromise the IP rating of the radio. Um, this is standard with many two-way radios, whereas with the R7, removing the dust cover has no impact on its IP rating. Both of these devices are rated um, IP68, which means they're completely dust tight and waterproof. They can be submerged in water of up to two meters for up to two hours. The R7 is also IP66 rated, which means it's been tested to withstand direct impact from a highly pressurized water source, such as a jet. So I've taken the antennas off the radio so that we can get a better look at the emergency button. Uh, the emergency button, when pressed, sends out a distress call to other radios within range. This feature allows users to quickly send out a distress signal in case of an accident or an emergency. This is one of the main reasons two-way radios have been widely adopted in industries such as security and manufacturing. This one here is the DP4400 and this one's the R7. Straight away I can tell that the button on the R7 is noticeably larger. Um, the bigger the button the easier it is to push, especially if you have gloves on. I think that this is a great improvement from Motorola um, as the many of the industries that use two-way radios do wear gloves. So I think again it shows Motorola has designed the device with the end user in mind. I've turned the radios on so that we can get a better look at the LED indicator light. Um, as you can see on the DP, it's flashing red because this radio is currently out of range. 
and on the R7 here it's lighting up as green so from the top they both pretty much look the same they're in a very similar location however from the front it's kind of difficult to see the DP indicator light because it's covered by the bulk of the speaker here but it's much much easier on the R7 this small change makes it much easier to see the radial status or if there's any issues no matter what angle you've got the radio from. When it comes to the displays, um, the biggest difference here is obviously the size of them. The DP has a 1.8 inch low pixel display and the R7 has a 2.4 inch high pixel display. Um, the bigger screen on the R7 means that um, notifications or information is more visible at a glance. Um, if you had a text message, for example, the text message would show up on the, the screen and you could see it straight away, rather than having to click through the menu, um, go into the inbox and then read the message. So the reason that the screen is able to be much bigger on the R7 is the position of the front facing speaker. So this is where it's located on the DP model. And as you can see on the R7, it's been strategically placed behind the keypad. Not only do I think this is really aesthetically pleasing, I think it's a really creative decision from Motorola to be able to have the bigger screen. Um, like I've said, the benefits of the bigger screen is seeing information at a glance. And I think that that adds to the overall user experience of the radio. Um, the keypads themselves on the radios are pretty similar. The buttons on the R7 are quite a bit bigger than on the DP. Um, again, this means that they're easier to use when you're wearing gloves and I do think they feel a lot more rugged in comparison to the DP buttons. Moving on to the main thing that I think is going to set the R7 apart from the DP series. Um, the main focal point of the R7 launch campaign was to hear and be heard. Motorola has put a lot of emphasis on the audio capabilities of the R7. First of all, the R7 has two mics. It has one in the front here and it has one on the back. Uh, the DP has one microphone that's built into the speaker here. These two mics use intelligent audio and adaptive noise cancellation technology to help improve the audio. Um, to do this, the back mic samples background noise and the front mic picks up your voice. Uh, the intelligent audio technology adjusts the volume to ensure that your voice is the main thing being heard on the other side uh, from the radio that's uh, picking up on your transmission. Um, the DP operates out of the box at 99 fonts, whereas the R7 is 104 fonts straight out of the box and can actually be programmed all the way up to 107 fonts. This is a very, very, very loud and means that this device will perform extremely well in loud environments such as manufacturing, um, warehouses, football stadium, maybe even an airport runway. It's also important to note that if you are upgrading your system from the DP4400 series to the R7 series that your accessories for the DP will not be compatible with the R7. Um, this is because of that newly designed accessory connector that we showed earlier. The battery connector at the back is also different so the batteries won't be compatible either. Um, with that being said, the actual charging accessories, so the multi-unit chargers, the single unit chargers, the travel chargers, stuff like that, they are compatible with the R7 so they will charge your device. So as an end note, I do think it's really sad to say goodbye to the DP4400 series. It has really been a shining star within the two-way radio industry for quite some time now. But the R7 has been developed with the end user in mind and it does have some great new qualities, such as the audio. Um, I would like to know your thoughts on what you think of the two devices and if you have any questions on anything that I've mentioned about the R7 or the DP4400, leave it in the comments down below.